So, good evening everyone. Uh, my name is Brendan. I'm working in the in the backing team, in the nature's backing team. So basically, uh, having some some fun hacking on a, all kind of matrix servers. Uh, and what I'm going to talk to you tonight is actually uh, kind of relevant to what Tamandine just talked about because it's uh, the kind of stuff that that is both quite that can be both quite inter interesting, interesting, uh, technically speaking, but also comes from real like solving real life problems that um, either individuals or even governments might have on the legal or just practical side. Uh, so as like the title uh, already spoiled it, I'm going to talk to you about message reproduction policies. First, what is this? In a, the, the gist of the thing is a message retention policy allows uh, a server or a room admin to dictate how long messages are going to be retained in a room. Basically, if I, if I want to say a message, the message that I'm sending is going to be to be deleted after like 10 seconds or 10 days or something like that, I'm going, that's what I'm going to, to, to use to, to find that. Then you might, you might ask, why do we need that? And there's two, two main reasons for that. There might be more, but there's like the more, the main stuff for that. First is confidentiality, which is both, some, both something um, individuals are interested in, but also like governments, for example, big corporations are interested in the fact that if they're talking about something really, um, really confidential, really sensible, uh, even they might not trust the encryption, they might not trust the network, they might not trust anything, they, and they just want the message to be deleted after, after some time, uh, to just like no traces of that message everywhere uh, in the world. Another uh, interesting point is this case, because so as uh, I think that you mentioned uh, in the matrix intro, in matrix every message is replicated in every room, uh, sorry, in every server uh, that's member of a room, which means that if if we are uh, I don't know 100 servers in the in a room, I'm sending a message. Every server gets a copy of that message. If there's thousands and thousands and of millions of messages sent to sent to that room, I'm, uh, that's quite a lot of disk space. So just being able to say purge every old message in that room. Can be can be quite useful here. So how how do, are we doing that in Matrix? So the first step in for every new feature in Matrix is the spec, uh, which defines basically what Matrix does, how Matrix servers behave. Uh, and in this case, we're talking about something we call an MSC, which is for which stands for Matrix uh, Spec Change, um, which is kind of the the same thing, well, the equivalent, the matrix equivalent of, a, of an RFC uh, for the IETF. Um, and this one is MSC 1763, um, which basically defines how, um, how a server can communicate message retention policies to other servers, to other users, other clients. Um, that's quite a, an interesting read if, you, if anyone's interested. Uh, I'll recommend it. Um, from there, um, once, once we have a spec or at least a proposal, we can go through the implementation and we currently have a Synapse implementation that exists, that's out there, which is experimental, therefore disabled by default, but still, still works uh, and, ha and allows uh, servers and uh, well, allows configuration of a policy at a server and a room level. Um, so if I want to configure, so for server admins in the room, if I want to, if you want to configure uh, a server, uh, you can just add those lines to your um, to your uh, to your Synapse configuration. Um, just uncomment that line to enable the to to enable the feature, and uncomment those lines to potentially set up a default retention policy so that, every, for example, everything, every message you've ever received is disabled after a year or something. Um, you can also configure it, as I mentioned, as a room level. Um, so currently there's no, like, in, 
UI interface for that, so you have to use uh, something in 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 Riot called DevTools. Uh, you can also just curl it if you're more of a command line aficionado. Uh, to open that, you can just go into into your room and in Riot and um, and, and type slash DevTools and send a custom state event or type endless detention, uh, empty state key, and then you just have a front end which is a bit of JSON with the max lifetime attribute here and a value which is the number in of milliseconds after which uh, an event node must disappear. Um, for, for example, I think this example is around spoken or something. Um, but really, once you've configured it, uh, once you've configured it uh, how does it work? Um, so basically what happens if, if an event disappears from, uh, well, expires from a, re from a retention policy point of view? Uh, the first thing that happens is Synapse is going to hide it from every event, from every client, uh, which means that every time uh, a client asks the, the server, asks Synapse which events are in the room, Synapse are just going to is just going to nicely ignore the fact that this event exists, uh, and then uh, that's just like hiding the event. That's not actually deleting it. Uh, it's going to to run purge jobs uh, every now and then, uh, which is just a background job that runs uh, by default every day, but it's configurable. Um, and that job deletes just every expired event, um, except, for, except for state event, because otherwise we would just break the matrix thing. Um, so uh, I just mentioned that you could configure uh, purge jobs, uh, and that, that's a bit more advanced uh, topic. Uh, but there is indeed a bit of configuration um, that you can add to the snippet that I've just shown before. Uh, all of that is documented, I'll link to the doc at the end of the presentation. Um, and uh, so the way you configure it is by saying, I want a purge job to purge every room with a policy which uh, retains messages between that amount of time and that amount of time, and I want that job to run frequently. So for example, in this config, we have a purge job that, that deletes everything, uh, every lifetime, that, that every message that has a lifetime between one and three days, and runs that every 12, hour, 12 hours, uh, so twice a day, and then a purge job that, that runs, that uh, targets every message that has a lifetime between three days and a year, and runs that every every day basically. The the advantage of that kind of configuration is because you might want to delete an event the the events sooner if they have a lower lifetime. So that because a lower lifetime usually means a higher level of sensibility and confidentiality. <clears throat> so the current uh, that's basically how uh, message retention works. Um, the current thing is there's currently some limitations to the implementation. Uh, the first one is, as I mentioned before, it's disabled by default because it's still an, ex an experimental feature. We don't want it to break everything just because we turn it on. We just because we turn it on by default without being precious enough. Uh, that has a downside that every server in the room uh, in a room that has a retention policy must have that feature turned down for events to, if, if, uh, for it to effectively disappear. Uh, there's an, another, um, another drawback is, well, the other limitation rather, is uh, there's currently no client support, at least as far as I know, uh, which means that, for example, in a Riot will not uh, delete uh, an expired message. Instead, it will just, um, you, you will need to hit clear cache, uh, clear cache and reload in the advanced setting so that it clears its local copies of events and um, and asks the server for more and the server will get, will then be able to politely politely ignore the events. Um, and uh, a third limitation is uh, so is that um, client implementation is the scope of the client uh, of the client implementation is currently a bit limited because uh, there is while there is a way to to 
the state event that we've seen um, just here that you sent to an event uh, to to a room and so both the client and the server can see it. Um, you there's currently no way to um, to for example share the default uh, a default retention policy with clients so they can't really know where when to um, when to to expire events. Uh, that might be solvable by uh, some of the spec change proposals, uh, which allow basically the biggest of them is they allow um, a server to share some of its some of its configuration with to to the clients. Um, and now just to to show you basically uh, practical uh, in a practical way the same thing as I just explained to you. Let's do a very quick demo. So I have uh, I have right here uh, a riot with uh, a room with some, some nice messages. Uh, I have right here my my server a, a console on my server my, uh, on my server's database. And if I look into the database, you can see indeed that there is some there are some messages. Um, if I I go to the <coughs> and I want to send a custom, uh, a custom event. I want to make this a, a state event, and that's done by the very, um, the very obvious way of clicking on the event, makes which creates this nice animation and turns it into a state event, <laughs> uh, in which I'm going to end, oops, the end of room. Uh, which is the type of my event, and in the content, I want to give it uh, <laughs> max lifetime of, let's say, 5,000 milliseconds, because I just want the demo to work right now. It's not really a practical, uh, practical value in the right real life, but that it's going to work for demo. So I'm going to send that. Um, you can see in here uh, that I've actually sent the event in the room. Uh, that's just an, um, an option in Riot that allows me to, to see every message that's read. Usually doesn't need to send to this night of the day. Um, and so, as you can see, those events are like obviously more than five, uh, five, uh, five seconds uh, old. And so they don't disappear now. But if I go into my settings and I <coughs> Click touch and read that button. And I'll wait for Riot to spread my pants. It should happen anytime soon. Fun fact you're using Firefox. I am using Firefox indeed. Hi, Mozilla. <laughs> <laughs> So that's so that oh it's yeah. right and so now you see that I can't see from right I can't see any message. Yay! <laughs> but that's uh, so that's one part of the things uh, so of the of the feature. Uh, as I'm running a bit late on time. Yeah, I I am going to wrap up really soon, really quick. Uh, so as I as I say it here. The first step of the, is Synapse hiding the event, uh, ignoring that the event exists, and hiding it from clients. The second step is a purge job that runs every day or so. So that so basically, while my server, my client can't see it, uh, it is the events are still there. I'm not going to wait for a day for my for my purge job to run for obvious reasons. Just trust me on that, or try on your on your own servers. Uh, but uh, after after some time, the, the job will run and, put, and remove those messages from my database, and that will be lost forever. Um, and apart from that, I just wanted to point out really quick, real quick, that we have very nice document and very complete documentation about uh, how to configure and how to configure message retention policies and how they work. Uh, and basically, that's where you need to go if you want to use that feature. And thank you. Okay, let's see.